Hello, my name's Simon Mason, and I'm the author of a book entitled Too High, Too Far, Too Soon. It's my memoir, and essentially it deals with addiction. However, many books have been written about addiction, and this one I've tried to talk a little bit about some of the things that happen to people who are addicted. The music we listen to, the clothes that we wear, the places we go, and the people we meet. The extract I'm about to read happened shortly after I'd been to see the Grateful Dead when they came to London in 1990, I believe it was. Um, the upshot of which is that we had a deadhead move into our flat that I was sharing with my friend Mark at the time. Um, and he, um, he decided that on leaving he was going to pay the rent by giving us 200 hits of acid. 200 hits of acid that I then proceeded to trundle up and down the country with distributing to some friends of mine. On the way back from Bristol, I got off the uh, bus, the, the coach, I'd taken one for the road as they say, and was just about to start walking towards the flat in Lambeth when I was rudely interrupted by two police officers, which is anyone who's ever taken acid will tell you is probably not the most exciting thing to happen. Anyway, this is what happened. We, well, me and the captain of my spaceship arrive at Victoria Coach Station a couple of hours, days, or maybe even weeks later, I'm not entirely sure. Although it seems to take a long time to navigate, I finally managed to get off the coach and head out into the afternoon crowds with more than a spring in my step. My Walkman is now playing me primal screams loaded, very, very loaded. I stop for a quick dance on the corner of Buckingham Palace Road, and while I wait for the lights to change from purple to whatever, someone taps me on the shoulder. I turn around to see two coppers standing in front of me. I am not prepared for this. Says one of them, pointing at my headphones. I point at myself and then decide to put my hands in the air, which might not have been the wisest move. Excuse me, sir, do you mind if we have a word with you? Could you take your Walkman off, please? He continues, gesturing with tennis racket-sized hands. Fuck. Wrong word, me thinks, as the music from the Walkman fades away to be replaced by the deafening boom of the copper's voice. I'm staring at the moustache bristling with activity above his foghorn mouth. Do you live locally, sir? Fuck, yes, uh, no, um, well, sort of over there, I say, pointing south, with my friend. He's expecting me home for tea. He's a vegetarian, you know. Why, is there a problem? They're both staring into my saucer-sized eyeballs while I'm now visibly shaking. Have you got any drugs on you, sir? Bit of cannabis, maybe? Uh, um, no, uh, fuck, no, nothing, uh, really. Oh, look, I've just got off the bus, mate. I've been to Bristol to see my mate Luke. Very nice, sir. Could you empty your pocket, please? I pull out a lump of dope and hand it to Plod. They have a look and a sniff and a smile. Nice bit of gear, that, mate. Oh, thanks. I'm arresting you a suspicion of being in possession of a controlled substance. You don't have to say anything, but anything you do say, blah, 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 fucking blah. The acid is now battling with reality, and it's getting hard to think straight. I think silence would be best here, but the acid thinks otherwise. Yeah, 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 my sister's a copper in Bristol, actually. Shut the fuck up, you fucking prick. We're waiting for the police van to take the three of us back to the station. I'm trying hard to make polite conversation with my captors. Well, one of them, good cop, a scouser. Bad cop is the one with the overactive facial hair, which is too much for me to cope with, so I concentrate on his colleague. Yeah, yeah, she's been in for a couple of years. She really likes the job, you know, capturing hardened criminals and protecting the public from muggers and that, you know, real criminals. There's no response. I keep digging. It's not a particularly big lump of dope, is it, mate? I mean, for personal consumption size. Obviously, it's not as if I had enough to start knocking it out for cash or anything. Not that I would have, obviously. Do you know what I mean? More silence. Liverpool are doing well, I reckon. I'm an Everton fan, mate. I'm actually from Liverpool. All right, what about you, mate? Shut the fuck up, you druggy twat. Bad cop is obviously keeping in character. Uh, right you are, mate. Um, look, this van's taking its time. Listen, could we just do a caution type thing and, and I'll be on my way? Fungus face turns to me. Listen, mate, it's quite fucking obvious to me that you're on something a little bit stronger than dope, so we're going to take you back to the station and find whatever the fuck it is wherever you may have it stashed. Now shut your fucking mouth and start walking. He says something into his radio and we start to walk. It's all I can do to put one foot in front of the other and try to stop my mind from thinking about the firing squad they no doubt have arranged for me back at the station. They begin to process me and within minutes start to search through my bag, almost immediately finding the stash of little white blotters I have left. I have no clue as to how many there are. What's this, Mr Mason? inquires Stalin features. I don't know. But, 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 I get the urge to be honest. It's acid, for personal consumption. Rather a lot there for personal consumption, wouldn't you say? But I like it, it's really good acid. Right, lock him up. <laughs>